presentation on the topic ASIC design flow. Basically, the design flow is meant that is it is a step by step process right from the beginning. Uh, that is how the ASIC or application specific ICs are manufactured from its uh, micro architecture, from its specifications rather, to its ending from to the fabrication slab. So we have covered this in two parts. In the first part, we will be covering about the front end designing part. And uh, in the second part, we will be continuing with the back end designing part. So this slide depicts the brief differences between ASIC and FPGA. ASIC, as the name suggests, application specific ICs and FPGA are field programmable gate arrays. Now, the time to market or the time required for from the synthesis or from the specification part to available in the market is much more in case of ASICs. The NRE or the non recurring engineering cost, that is the one time investment, such as the cost of fabri fabrications lab, the in design engineers are also very much higher for ASICs. The design flow is very much complex for ASICs. The unit cost, ASICs are produced in bulk, like millions of ASICs are produced at a one time. So as a result, the unit cost comes down. The performance is also uh, high for ASICs as compared to FPGAs. The power consumption is low and the unit size for ASICs is also low. Now, we will be starting with the basic ASIC design flow. Here, the left side picture depicts the wide or the more vigilant uh, view of the ASIC design flow right from the design specifications towards till the production end. And uh, the right side picture I will be referring while making you understand the various slides and the various steps involved in the ASIC design flow. Now, so we all hear about the front end designing part and the back end designing part. So I will be giving you a brief idea about the differences between the two. The front end design part starts from the specification about the power speed and their micro architecture to RTL design where uh, the design engineers design the architecture based on some languages such as Verilog, uh, BHDLs and other HDLs. Then after that, it is sent for simulation and verification part. Uh, it is then synthesized and uh, then it is sent for DFT or uh, design for testing. And till DFT part, the front end designing part is gets over. And after that, the back end designing part arises such as the floor planning, the PNR, the placement and the uh, routing, the clock tree synthesis, and then uh, our signal generator, timing, uh, post-timing CTSs until tape out. This uh, comprises of the backend design. So in this first part, I will be covering the front-end design part only. Now the various steps involved are, first of all, the chip specification. Now the customer decides the chip specifications to be used, such as uh, what kind of uh, speed it requires while producing the results right from the input, the power it will be requiring while operating, these things are specified by the customers towards the top level manager of some companies. Then the manager depicts the micro architecture about this, about what will be happening, about the several architectural level designing is done by the top level managers of that company. Now, after that has been done, now comes part of the, the design engineers. The design engineers are responsible for designing the micro architecture through several uh, HDLs such as Verilog and VHDL and etc. In this case, uh, it comprises of two simulation tools, for example, functional simulation tools and timing simulation tools. Now, uh, it is also known as the behavior of simulation tools, which are done by the RTL design engineers. Now, after their design, design has been done, then it is further replicated for the ASIC manufacturing flow, uh, and it is prepared for the DFTs. For example, the HDL, once it is uh, done, I have depicted the picture about the flow of the HDL of the design engineers. Once the design has been done, then it is sent for synthesis using some tools such as uh, by Cadence. Then it is formed uh, as a result of net list. Then it is uh, lo logically optimized, some gate level and even transistor switch level uh, optimization has also been done. Then after then it is uh, sent for layout. Now, then chip partitioning occurs. Chip partitioning basically means, uh, if uh, you have seen the previous videos of stick diagram, there it has been depicted that the VLSI chips are pausing over some levels. That, that is, all the circuits are not at a particular same level. Rather, they are uh, about uh, some level, like level one, level two, and level three. In this picture, I have shown that, first of all, the chip is broken into several levels, and then these levels are organized in the chip partitioning area by using some high-level languages, such as C++, System C, or nowadays, even Java and Python are being used. So these levels are 
like properly maintained and checked if there is uh, are some error or not then after this they are sent for dfts now this is a very much crucial step in the front end designing part as this involves very much time also and uh, very much skilled uh, engineers also now uh, what is dft dft is nothing but de uh, design for testability is a design technique that makes testing a chip possible and cost effective by adding some additional circuitry to the chip now we all know that uh, there might some error occurs while manufacturing the chip such as uh, like density issue nowadays the density is very much high in case of uh, microprocessors we all know like uh, billions of transistors are there in a particular chip so there might be occurring some density issue even uh, as the chips are very much dense the wires can also touch uh, there also can occur several software issues such as uh, we all know that about bugs that are being created in software so it can also be in cat tools also now these type of issues are cannot be verified uh, just by verification engineers through uvm but they require some additional circuitry to be added in the chip which is done by dft engineers now dft engineers basically create a file known as atpg in the last point i have mentioned that is called as automatic test pattern generation file now this file attaches some specific circuitry to this uh, 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 existing circuit for making it more prone to testable like this version now the previous step before dft is the synthesis part where the gate level verilog is being synthesized by using some synopsis design constants where the clock speed uh, the frequency the power and the technology like whether or not 14 nanometer is being used or 7 nanometer nowadays 5 nanometer is also being used by apple and uh, tsmc has announced that it will be using about uh, 3 nanometer chips to be available by the market by 2022 so we can imagine the level of like technology nodes where it is being going that, like the single strand of a dna is around 2.5 nanometer so it is almost to like that level so for these uh, micro uh, nanometer level chip verification cannot be done by simply verification tools by uvm for this dft engineers are required by specific softwares and after the dft it is sent for the back end designing part where the floor planning arises and the placement routing arises so this will be discussing in the next video so that's all for today and thank you